Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 7, Lesson 4, Dividing Powers of 10. So last few lessons we have um, been um, adding or uh, multiplying powers of 10, we've been doing a power by a power, and now we are dividing powers of 10. Okay, so this one's written wrong. It should say, why is this equal to this? I put the word equal right there. Um, so we want to say, why are these two things equal? Explain or show your thinking. And today's lesson really looked at taking a number, let's say I'll use a different base for this one. If I had the base of 2 to the 5th power, and I divided that by 2 to the 2nd power, what I'm doing is I'm thinking at the top, my numerator actually has 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, has 5 of those, and the denominator has 2 times 2. So if you're doing just basic kind of fraction work here, we would reduce, reduce, and we're left with what? We're left with simply 2 to the third power, right? But the way you also get that is we recognize that this is going to be 5 minus 2. So it's 2 to the 5 minus 2 power, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So the simple way is to simply subtract the two exponents and keep the base the same. But you can see visually how that works there as well. So based upon what you see here, make sure you do number one and explain or show your thinking. All right, moving down here. Okay, so today we start to combine a lot of things together in our homework. We can see we're adding ones of the same bases. We can see that we are dividing. We are dividing and then multiplying. We are dividing a bunch and then we're dividing with things to uh, um, uh, raising to another exponential power. So lots of combinations happening here. So let's take a look. So the first one, we have 10 to the fourth plus 10 to the third plus 10 to the zero power. Okay, great one here. When we're adding, there's nothing we can do except really add them up. Okay, we can't combine things in any fancy ways. That was multiplying. So 10 to the fourth, you can think about that rewriting that as one and four zeros, one, two, three, four, plus 10 to the third is one with three zeros. This is a tricky one. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay, so now we add them up. We have 10,000 plus 1,000 plus one. That becomes 11,001. So be very careful with that one there. They want to try to trick you and say, what if I multiply? Don't do it. <laughs> okay, um, for B, I'll let you do B there. And C, we have 10 to the eighth over 10 to the fourth times 10 to the fifth. So let's do this part first. This is, first of all, 10 to the 8 minus 4 power. We'll multiply that by 10 to the 5th. So what's 8 minus 4? 8 minus 4 is 4. So that becomes 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 5th. Now when I multiply powers together, what do I do? I add them. This becomes 10 to the 4 plus 5 power, which becomes 10 to the 9th. So we subtracted here when we were dividing, and then we added here when we were multiplying. All right, D. First thing we want to do, we're going to multi we have multiplication happening on the top, and we, then we divide the whole thing. Okay, I could do that, that or I could also look and you know, later on you'll be able to kind of reduce some things out. So for example, I know with some mental math, four plus six is ten. Okay, 7 plus 3 is 10. So those are actually, when I get to the end of it, we'll come back to it, are all going to cancel, leaving you with just 10 to the fifth power. So let's see how this works out for in another way. So on our top, we have 10 to the 7 plus 5 plus 3 over, on the bottom, 10 to the 4 plus 6. That becomes 10 to the 15th over 10 to the 10th, and then we have that, we're going to subtract 10 to the 15 minus 10 power to end up with 10 to the 5th. So if you do it this way, it certainly works. I can recognize that 4 and 6 are 10, 7 and 3 are also 10, so those are all eliminated, leaving with just 10 to the 5th there. So as you get better at it, you'll also see how that works out too. And E takes us to yesterday's assignment, which today's, we have exponential stuff, dividing by. So let's do this here. Let's rewrite this as 10, 
I'll write it the first top. I'll do the first part. Seven times two, and then down here we have ten to what? The four times three power. Okay. So now when you rewrite that, you can continue this one here by then multiplying that, rewriting it, and then subtracting. So I'll let you do that one on your own. Okay, three and four are very similar problems. They give us two points, and they say, what is the equation of the line today? So to find the slope of two points, we talked about that last time, we look and we use for the slope, we do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x, oops, x1. In our case here, our y2 value is four minus seven over two minus five, same numbers as last time. We have negative three over negative three, which simply equals a slope of one. So now we have a slope. So in order to get an equation, it's best to probably in this case use the point slope equation, which is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, okay? This allows us to, it's called a point slope equation. We use that when we have a point, okay? So we have a point here and we have a slope. So when I have a point and a slope, I can use those values in these equations. I'm gonna plug the point into the y and the x and the slope into the m. So let's rewrite this. We have y minus y1 is seven equals slope of one times x minus x1, which is five and probably don't want to leave it like this you could um, but it because that is an equation probably want to get in the form of, of slope intercept form so i can distribute through and this becomes uh, y minus seven equals one times x is x one times negative five is negative five i can add seven to both sides so that y equals x and seven minus five is two so there's an equation for the line. This is also an equation as well. It depends on if they want you to ever leave it in point slope form or write it in slope intercept form. This is slope intercept. All right, so slope intercept form and point slope form. Those are the two ways it can be written. You wanna do the same thing now for number four. That's the idea there. All right, and number five. Find the volume of a cylinder, cylinder, circle, like a can, right? A cylinder, with a height of four, diameter of 10. Use 3.14 as pi to approximate the answer. All right, so our volume of a cylinder is found by doing volume equals pi r squared. Pi r squared is what? That's the area of a circle. That's pi r squared. So the area of the base times the height. So do we have a radius? Nope, they gave us a diameter. Well, what is the radius? If the diameter is 10, that means the radius is half of that. The radius is five. So we have our numbers. We have a height of four. We have a radius of five. We have a value for pi. We're gonna plug all those in and see what we come up with. So pi is 3.14, radius is five squared, and the height is four. So now our job is to do what? Is to multiply those things out and see what you come up with. Whatever your answer is gonna be, whatever your answer is gonna be, remember it's gonna be inches cubed because we're doing it inches, and we do inch times inch times inch, or like this, inch to the first times inch to the first, times inch to the first. And what do we do with the exponents? We add them if they have the same bases. So it becomes inches to the one plus one plus one is three. And that's why we call it inches cubed using today's lesson as well. All right, I'll let you do that one on your own. Good luck and we'll see you next time.